torture. Right with what? Oh, you, you got to pay the torture. Okay. I just said, all right, I got to do this meter. I mean, not the meter, uh, the garage. All right, so. Yeah. You got the app. Huh? You have the app here. Yeah, no, I have it. <laughs> but still, it was hurting me. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> Not the friendly app. All right, we're ready. Let me just uh, grab this mic real quick. Okay. Say a few words. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thanks so much for coming out. Thanks for supporting live jazz music. And of course, to everybody in our live stream, thanks so much for tuning in. It's our pleasure to present this live concert over here from Smalls Jazz Club. Before we begin, let me just say that this is a sponsored set. And I would like to thank Evan Tarks for his support and his generous Ooh. contribution. That's right. That's right. Thanks so much for helping us out. And of course, if you'd like to sponsor one of those sets, please email us at foundation at smallslive.com. We're just signed up on our webpage, that's smallslive.com, and there you can find our immense archival recordings right here from the club. Now, without further ado, let me introduce you to this incredible band. Bring them together and give a warm round of applause for the great Alan Mednard on the drums. The great Vicente Archer on the upper bass. The piano, keep it up for Victor Gould. And of course on the vibraphone, the lovely Chen Chen Lu. Leading this great quintet another than the incredible Jeremy Felt. Jeremy Felt and his kinder is very good.
right. Thank you very kindly. It's uh, it's almost a strange feeling to have people here. It's like what they say, you know, how did these people get in my living room? Anyhow, thank you very kindly for being here on this lovely uh, Saturday evening where I couldn't find any parking. <laughs> um, it means life is coming back to the city. Anyhow, we're playing music from a newly released CD of mine that uh, came out in February titled Grio, This is Important. And um, you might ask what a Grio is. Well, a Grio in West African culture is uh, part of a series of storytellers and poets or musicians, what have you, that come to the village and pass down stories from generations past to the uh, village, to the people in the village. And so I fancy myself as a griot as do all of us on the stage in the jazz sense with passing down tradition. Each song on the CD is um, dedicated to an interview uh, that I did for the accompanying book that I just put out as well, which now makes me an author. I never thought I would be, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. And that book is also called Griot. <laughs> and um, in that book, I basically, well, I've been doing a bunch of interviews over the past three years, and so I'm up to about 54 at this point. But I've released 15 of them in the first volume. And um, that first song was written for our dearly departed pianist, master pianist, his name is Larry Willis. And uh, yeah, that's right. And I interviewed him in January of 2019. And we had a great interview, it's in the book. And, but one of the things, I tried to find a sound, sound bite from everybody in which, I, I use the word try, but it wasn't really that hard at all because everybody had something very profound to say, so my job was quite easy in that respect. And one of the things that he, when I asked him was, uh, I, we were talking about the state of musicianship amongst uh, black musicians in the country, and what he said was, he was referring to the music, jazz, and he was talking about how he's at peace and he feels good about playing a music that's still, that's largely uh, not the you know, percentage of music that's being listened to. And he said that's okay to him because he doesn't mind being the underdog. And as he put it, the underdog gives him reason to fight. And so therefore, the name of that song was Underdog. Now what we'd like to do is play something from, uh, again, the record, but an interview that was uh, conducted with Paul West, who's a great bassist. He's still with us, he's uh, 87 years old. And if you knew him and if you've seen him, you wouldn't think he's older than 60. So I should have asked him what the secret of life was, but uh, you know, he played bass with Dizzy Gillespie and Don Washington and Ray Charles and a bunch of people in the 50s and continued on and he's still active, whatever active means to this day. And um, in this interview, I was asking him about his earliest uh, recollections of you know appearing on the scene and he was talking about how he grew up in a family where his father was a minister and so I asked him how his father felt about him going out to be a jazz musician um, especially because that was a period where a lot of uh, min uh, people of the cloth and, and, and ministers and, and pastors and what have you looked at jazz as being secular and so I asked him, I said, well, listen, did your father have any reservations about you? And he said, no, but he did say, he gave him this one piece of advice. He said, carry Christ wherever you go. And so, therefore, the name of this song for Paul West is carry Christ, I'm sorry, carry Christ wherever you are. Here we go. Two.
And uh, that was Carrie Christ, wherever you are. Now what we'd like to do is play something that was inspired by an interview that I did with J.D. Allen, great tenor player and a good friend of mine. And we used to have a band, my old quintet, some 10, actually 13, 14 years ago. Um, we had a great quintet and great time on the road for some five or six years. And in this interview, I was talking to him about what he thought about today's music, and he was very positive about it. Um, however, he did stress the importance of recognizing the source and respecting the source of where it came from. And um, to that effect, he called this one, well, I called it, based off of his uh, own words, don't dog the source.
How about it one more time for Alan Mednard on the drum? Tang Tang Lu. Tang Tang Lu. Vicente Archer on the bass. Vicente. Now, what we'd like to do is play something for you that was uh, inspired by an interview that I did with Bertha Hope, which is also in the book as well. All these are in the book. Uh, well, most of these. We're going to play some that's not. But um, this one is in the book. And this is something of a conversation that we had in which she uh, lamented that as a black woman in entertainment, she is still struggling for a seat at the table. And so, therefore, the name of this song is Seat at the Table. Here we go. Mm, two, three. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I spent on this very stage over the years with the subject of this next piece. And uh, I'm talking about another fallen hero of ours. His name is Harold Maver. And yeah, that's right. And for those of you that might have been fortunate enough to see Harold, um, you know, he was quite a personality. And uh, he was loud and boisterous, which was part of his charm. And it didn't matter whose gig it was, whoever, whenever the gig was over, he would grab the mic and he would take the opportunity to educate you, the audience, and a lot of times us, the band members, about different things that happened uh, 
in history, in his history, playing his music, which went all the way back to the early 50s. And um, which would make for a great reason that he was a great educator. He taught at William Patterson for almost 40 years before he died in uh, September of uh, 2019. And I've been teaching at William Patterson since 2016. And so to give you an idea of how dedicated of an educator he was, and it dawned on me after I told the story, I was like, wow. Because William Patterson, for those of you that don't know, is all the way out in Wayne, New Jersey, uh, which is near Patterson, New Jersey. And he, Harold lived pretty much near JFK Airport, and he didn't have a car. <laughs> so his days began very early commuting from where he lived all the way to campus. So on the, we used to teach on the same day, and sometimes our, our uh, schedules would match up to where I can give him a ride back to the city. And on uh, one of the occasions, I thought, well, you know, let me go ahead and see if I can get him to do an interview, because he always loved to talk. So I don't think it was gonna be a hard, you know, thing for me to get him to interview. So got in the car, said, yeah, hey, I'd like to interview you for this book that I'm writing. He said, oh yeah, no problem, you know, and so, I, that's exactly what I did. For the next 50 or so minutes, we had a great conversation. One of the things I asked him about was the solidarity amongst the cats on the scene. And this is something that I'd heard from him before, um, but I never got tired of hearing because it reminded me um, that we should all be, you know, celebrate each other while we're here instead of, you know, wait until somebody dies and they'd be like, oh, I love this cat, and you know, and then all of a sudden you want to have all these words about him. He was talking about how back in the day, he said everybody was cool. He said sometimes cats would be strung out, but they still were cool. He was talking about how Art Taylor, he'd say something like Art Taylor, who's a you know, legendary drummer, he'd say, oh man, Art Taylor, you sound good. And Art Taylor would immediately give it up to one of the people that he looked up to, which was Philly Joe Jones. He said, I ain't, I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is playing Philly Joe Jones. He talked to Ron Carter, and Ron Carter would give it up to Paul Chambers. Paul Chambers was only two years younger than Ron, but he would give it up to Paul Chambers. He you know, talked to Jimmy Cobb. Hey, man, Jimmy, you sounded great. Oh, I'm playing Philly Joe stuff. And so this is the type of thing that went on um, in that period. And so therefore, when you hear his voice, he couldn't wait to tell me that. Matter of fact, I don't think I actually got the full question out before he just interjected, which I completely didn't mind. But that also inspired this song that you're about to hear. It's entitled... Solidarity. Let you do that intro a couple times. One, let me give you four beats. One, two, three, four.
I should also mention that now that we have live audiences, I actually bought some CDs. So, if you guys are interested to come see me, I'd be happy to tell you one. If you're interested in the book, I don't have any here because I sold out of the books. But, <laughs> if you go to my online shop, they will be back in stock in the middle of next week. You can go to my website, jeremypelt.net, and there's a tab right there. It'll take you right there. You can go ahead and buy the book in hardcover or paperback. So, uh, yeah, please check it on out. Thank you guys for coming on out. We love you, and uh, we're going to take our break right now. Thank you very much. Jeremy Pelt. Thank <laughs> you. 